back to my channel. Today's another installment of my 100 Years of Makeup for Pale Skin series. Today is 1950s and as you can probably see, it's probably a little bit different to how you would traditionally associate a stereotypical 1950s look to be. I've gone for a much more soft, subtle, soft pink look. The whole kind of like bright glossy red lip with a foam mole and like a massive winged liner is just so everywhere it's very stereotypical and that's how people generally do 1950s makeup but I did quite a bit of research um, and I looked around that that look is definitely prominent in the 1950s but they did also use a lot of pinks they were really into pinks pastels on the lid pinks on the cheek pinks on the lips they also did sort of peachy looks like this as well where all the colors would coordinate the 1950s was very much post-war it was like the start of the baby boomers era and um, it was a very prosperous time for the world because it was post-war so people had a lot more money so there was a lot more products coming out exciting new colors they loved a very full coverage base very matte as you can see my skin's very matte and it was all about the lashes very voluminous full lashes and the lips were always a little bit overdrawn so they were really juicy and voluptuous and of course you could always switch out the lip for a bright red and it would still look awesome and it would be a little bit more traditionally you know stereotypically 1950s if that's what you prefer but I just think this is a nice take and a little bit different so I hope you enjoy this tutorial don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it and subscribe for more pale skin videos so to prep my skin I'm going to use my belief the true cream aqua bomb this is a moisturizer but I way prefer using it as a primer I find it doesn't sink in that fast which is why I quite like it because it tends to sit a little bit more on top of the skin therefore your makeup just smooths on beautifully but it is quite hydrating and I want my base to be flawless because the 1950s was all about absolute sort of perfected skin now for foundation today I'm gonna to go in with a very full coverage foundation that leaves a very kind of powdery matte finish it's the Marc Jacobs remarkable in ivory lights this gives you total coverage if you want it like if you use a lot you'll get a complete total coverage and I'm just using my EXO Beauty Round Top Face Brush to buff this into my skin because this gives a very full coverage using a brush with this product. And I kind of use either a patting motion or I slightly push down with the product just to keep my hairs all going in the same direction. You don't want to blend in circles like that. A, because it can sort of micro exfoliate the skin and create more texture but it can also lift all the hairs up so your baby hairs are a lot more prominent, your peach fuzz. <laughs> this product though, it is really important that you use a moisturizing primer under it like I did because otherwise it does look very dry. I don't need to apply any concealer on any breakouts because that foundation is so full coverage, but I will just put a little bit under my eyes. I'm using my Tarte Shape Tape in Fair Neutral. Just a little bit where I've still got a bit of darkness. I don't usually bring my foundation up too high under my eye. Actually, I'm gonna use a smaller brush going to use this eco tools micro blending brush it's a bit more precise and I just want this like right under my eye the only thing with the Marc Jacobs foundation it does crease quite easily like you'll find it might crease into your smile lines so it isn't a good product to use like to really use heavily under the eye which is why I kind of left it looking not as perfected under there take any excess across the eyelids if you want as well X is a nice primer now I am going to powder also. I'm going to use my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light and a big fluffy powder brush. They used either translucent or peach colored powder. That's what the website that I got all the information from was saying. And this is a kind of very, very lightly pigmented powder. Like it doesn't add much pigment at all. I'm going to go with more of a pink theme today just because my 1930s and my 1940s look also used kind of red shades. I just want to change it up a bit. Um, so I'm going in with my Benefit Cheekathon palette, taking this shade here, Dandelion, on my Serac Beauty Blush Brush. Got quite a lot because I'm not going to add contour or bronzer. And I'm going to really, really, really warm up my cheeks with this. I'm pretty sure I did this technique in my 1940s tutorial as well, um, where I bring the color up a little bit onto my temples. Now keep that blush handy because we will use it through the eyes. I'm just gonna do my brows. I'm not gonna apply any highlighter today because they were really focused on very flawless matte skin. So I'm, I'm gonna be good and I'm not gonna use highlighter even though I really like using highlighter. I'm just gonna fill in my brows. Now my brows, the brows in the 1950s were a lot more 
um, curated and defined than the 1940s. The 1940s embraced more of a thicker brow than the 1930s, but that was quite natural. And then by the 1950s, they had gotten really quite defined again. They still weren't overly thin. They sort of embraced their natural shape. So actually, I'm just going to do my brows fairly normal because I feel like that's what they did. Using my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade 2. Then I'm taking the Benefit Cabral Gel Cream Pomade, whatever you call it, colour. This is also in shade 2. And just my Sedona Lace Angled Brush. And then I'm just going to set my brows with my Benefit Gimme Brow in shade 3. I think I've seen, I've seen a lot of modern recreations of 1950s looks that tend to just have like a nude lid or a champagne lid with a softly defined brown crease and then a big winged liner and red lip. Like it's just kind of a standard look. Um, but they did also use a lot of pastels. You'll see quite a lot of like um, pastel blue, greens, pinks. You know, just a light wash on the lids. So that's what I'm going to go for today. Back in with the Dandelion blush here. And just a flat shader brush. This one's number three brush by Hourglass. And then just start to apply this on the lid. So it's quite subtle. And then I'm going to go in with a fluffy brush in that same colour. But just so it diffuses a bit nicer in the crease. But it's pretty much a one colour look. Which is really, really easy. Now for the iconic winged liner on the upper lash line, I'm going to use my Kat Von D liner in Trooper. And I am going to do a nice classic cat eye wing with it. Sometimes it was more like just a defined upper lash line with not much of a wing. But they did do a little wing, so that's what I'm going to do today. Then, this is a funny little thing they did. They took um, black eyeshadow. Marilyn was very much known for doing this. You take an angled brush and any black eyeshadow. I've just got the one from my Naked Basics palette. Tap off the excess a bit. And then define the lower lash line, but actually flick out the shadow into almost like a double wing because it kind of made it look like your lashes were so voluminous and long that it caused a shadow on your lower lash line. It's a bit of a funny thing, we don't really do this double wing thing. I'm just gonna put a bit of my Chi Chi eye brightener in my inner corners as per. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of Chi Chi eye brightener on my waterline. Don't know if they used nude liner, but my waterline is very red today from not enough sleep. Now the lashes were a very, very, very big part of the 1950s look, so I'm going to use my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, which is very, very volumizing, and I'm going to use lashes. The lashes I'm going to use today, I think they are the Manicare Cara lashes, which are very, very thick and voluminous. Um, I just don't have the packet anymore, but I'm pretty sure they are the Cara lashes by Glam by Manicare. And then for lips, I'm going to go in with a kind of rosy pink colour. I'm going to use Lusty Rose by Benefit. It's one of those ones with like a liner on one end, but I don't really use it like that. I just kind of smush the colours together. Then I'm just going to apply a little bit of liner just to define it a bit more. I'm using the Bare Minerals Gen Nude in Vibe. They did overdraw their lips a bit as well. They also had quite glossy lips I saw, um, especially when they wore red, it was like very like lacquered red. But I'm just going to pop in a little bit of my Sugar Gloss by Bema Minerals. Just in the very centre to kind of make my lips look even more voluminous and plump. So this is the final look here. It's a little bit more subtle than perhaps you would think 1950s makeup is. You know, it's just there's so many tutorials out there for the whole red lip, faux mole, you know, winged liner thing. It's just kind of, 
um, I wanted to try and do something a little bit different and especially a wee bit more different to a couple of my past decade tutorials which do feature you know a defined lash line and a red lip so that's why I went with this sort of coloring which is a little bit different a bit more softer of course you could completely you know switch out the pink shadow for a cream and then do a bright red lip and it would be still extremely you know 1950s style this is just a different kind of one I wanted to do so yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, then don't forget to give this video a like for me. It really helps me out. If you've missed any of my other decades, I'll link you to my playlist up here of the series. And you can also subscribe so you get notifications for my future videos by clicking on my face down here. Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful few days. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!